Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This is the English summary, a just and a translation of the Majlis of Hazrat Mawlana Qamaru Zaman Sahab, Damat Barakatuhum, which took place on the 12th of Shawwal 1441, corresponding with the English date 25th of May 2021. Hazrat Wala Damat Barakatuhum says that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his was. His nasihat, his lecture and his talk was very concise, brief and short. Sometimes just two, three words, two, three sentences, maybe two or three minutes. From that particular category is this hadith, اِتَّقِ اللَّهَ حَيْثُ مَا كُنْتَ وَأَتْبِعِ السَّيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَمْحُحَا وَخَالِقِ النَّاسَ بِخُلُقٍ حَسَنٍ if the dunya, if people can come on this and make amal on this particular hadith, that person will become a wali a kamil, a wali pa excellence. Ittaqillaha haythu ma kunta. Fear Allah wherever you may be, whether you're in the masjid or in your business place, whether you're in the courts or whether you're in the jungles, whether it may be day or whether it may be night. Every person should keep this hadith in front of him. We should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unfortunately, alas, today even the religious are not fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is necessary. The Quran and the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are filled with this command of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Much mention is made of taqwa. Yes, Iman is there, but it is not sufficient and it doesn't stop there. Rather, after Iman, to adopt taqwa is of utmost importance so that we can carry out our a'mal, we perform our salat, and we stay away from sin. From among, amongst the Buzrugan Deen, we also find those who ascended the mimbar. And what did they say? Ittaqillah. And then they came down. It was all over. The lecture was given. That was the message they had to pass on to people. Hazrat Mawlana Shah Wasiullah Sahib used to speak about this uh, in abundance tremendously. A person should have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his heart. Today, Islam is not being made. Because there is no fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes into a heart of an individual, then Islam, rectification, reformation would become easy. Don't we see? Don't we hear so much? So many of these complaints come to me. So often, Hazrat Wala Damad Barakatuhu is saying that people, their affairs with one another, they are weak in that. Men also, the women also, you would find usurping of one another's rights, abusing uh, one another. Therefore, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is of paramount importance. Regarding the government, a person fears. He's worried about his shop and his business. He's worried that he would have to pay a fine, maybe 5,000, 10,000, or even stay in jail for a few days. In the fear of all of that, he obeys and he follows whatever rules and regulations the government has stipulated. Then what can we say about the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? My son, Hazrat Wala Damad Barakatu Misseng, stays in the Middle East and amongst the Arabs this is common. Over and over they would say to one another, Ittaqillah, fear Allah. Fear Allah. Can we even understand this? Well, leave alone Arabic. Today we have lost the Urdu. What Arabic are we going to understand? So that's the first nasihat from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ittaqillaha haythu ma kunta. Fear Allah wherever you may be. Secondly, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Wa atbi'u sayyata al-hasanata tadamhuha. And follow up an evil, a sin, with a good deed, it would erase it. Kitna umda, kitna asan. 
So wonderful and so easy it has been made. At least say Astaghfirullah. Say La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. It would erase that sin. Sometimes it is ghibat. Sometimes it is the cast casting of lustful gazes. But immediately say something. Astaghfirullah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran. La yaghtab ba'dukum ba'dha. That we should not backbite. Some should not do a bad bite others. We should not do this. This is a sin. We th think for a moment that I'm speaking bad about this one and that one. We, it just stops there. Rather, we are actually disobeying and being disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If this one hadith can be remembered and can be practiced upon, so much of peace will come down on earth. Sayyidina Imam Ghazali, a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of the 6th, maybe the 7th century of Islam, he used to say that Salihin, the, 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 the pious, the pious people, even their gatherings are filled with ghibat and backbiting. He's saying and speaking about his zamana. What can we say? About our times, do you think that our gatherings are free from this type of evil? There is ghibat in the madrasas, there is ghibat in the khankas, and the list goes on. Al Muhtabu Fasikun, Al Namam Fasikun. The person who backbites is an open sinner. A person who carries tales and he slanders is an open sinner. Maybe your fast would not break, but most definitely. All are unanim unanimous on this. You will be completely and totally deprived of, re of the reward of that particular fast and ibadat. Allahu Akbar. Whichever country I went to, Hazrat Wala Damat Barakatum is saying, I quoted this hadith. It is so short. Short as inna a'atayna kal kawthar. Hazrat Tanwi Rahmatullah used to say, after a son, immediately make tawbah. That's why we said earlier, Astaghfirullah, say it immediately, do it immediately. And then what happens to the sin? The signs of that sin, it is erased. Our ulama Rabbaniyin, they had fikr for the ummah. They used to think that how they had their pulse, they had their finger on the pulse of the ummah and thereafter they gave remedies. You know, I've come here, Hazrat Wala is speaking about uh, the place. Masjid Aqila in Mehwa, Kamarbagh. He's, he's discussing and he's speaking to his audience there. I'm astonished, I'm amazed. We have forgotten the original and the essence. The Bayan and the Majlis. And we have become busy in cutting up and seeing to the Lawazimat uh, of the mangoes and this and that and the other. I'm actually shocked. I'm actually shocked. This bayan that I am giving will soon reach out throughout the world, the four corners of the world. Such ijadat and scientific uh, innovations and technology has been created that we are benefiting from all the time. وَخَالِقِنْ nas bi hasan And I come, come across to people with the best of character. With the best of character. There are many that are uh, par excellence. In ibadat, however, when it comes to the duties and to the rights of people, we find that we are weak in this. Complaints come on a daily basis to me. And I even ask the people, Hazrat Wala says, that I ask them, so such a grave thing, such a serious thing was done against you, but who was it done? He says, my brother, my nephew, my own people. Now this is what is happening in the ummah. And what does Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Bu'ithtu li'utammima makarim al-akhlaq. I've been sent for this very purpose so that I could perfect, perfect, noble character. I've been sent so that I could perfect, noble character. I've been sent for this and for this, uh, and this very same thing is absent amongst the ummah. We speak and we say that uh, there is no need for this. 
There is, there is great need for this. There is great need for this. Then addressing somebody in the in the gathering, Hazardwala says that you and you are Malvi. Uh, these things you have to have a passion and a deep, great desire for it as well. Create this in your heart and affinity towards these things. In 1914, Sheikh Rashid Raza came to Aligarh University. The students were present and then he addresses them and he says to them that do not restrict all this year to yourself. Rather, make it for the Ummah, for the community, for the society, for the entire world. Let the fida of it be general. He thereafter went to Dioband and he went to Lucknow as well. And he spoke about this year to the students that you are entrusted with this knowledge. You have to now pass it on. You have to pass it on. Ramadan came, Ramadan went. We performed our Taraweeh Salat. But what has happened to our character? What has happened to our Akhlaq? That we are causing harm to people. An Nammam Fasiqun. Again, Hazrat Wala quotes. And he says, the one who slanders, the one who backbites, the one who carries tales. Such a person is an open sinner. He is deprived of all, all rewards. This about... Uh, Sheikh Rashid, Rashid Raza. I even even written it in my kitabs. Alhamdulillah, the Aqwal -e Salaf has been now completed finally after many long years in 11 volumes. Mawa'izul Quran. Selected verses and chapters of the Quran I have condensed, and this has also come to a completion now. Alhamdulillah. You people are also doing work. I'm also doing work. We all are doing this. Make dua that this year uh, becomes established as beneficial for us in this world and in uh, the Akhirat. Ramadan has passed, but Jari Rakko, even after Ramadan, keep it going. Keep it continuous and consistent, whatever we're doing. Maybe we cannot recite a full juice of the Quran. At least quarter juice of the Quran we can recite. Go over and study the kitabs of our Buzrogan -e Deen. You know, we earn wealth and then we gather it. It just doesn't stop there. Continue, put it into business, invest it so that that wealth can continue to grow. Sayyidina Imam Shafi rahimahullah ta'ala would say that uh, let your wealth grow. Otherwise, a time would come when it will eventually get depleted and you would have nothing. You have this wealth with you. Let it grow. Similarly, we have with us this piety, this spirituality, this amal that we have been doing in the month of Ramadan. Let it not be that the month of Ramadan has come to an end and all of our deeds would come to an end. Our deeds, our a'mal would come to an end. Rather, let us nurture it. Let us let it grow. Allahu Akbar. The silsila, a mufti from Darulun Dioban writes, and he says that the silsila that I had in Ramadan of the hajjud, of this, that and the other, it, it should, uh, uh, he's writing about how beautiful it was and it should continue and I write back to him saying most definitely let it continue let it be con consistent and continuous the madaris are for this it is for the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is for the ta'aleem of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the ta'aleem that he has given uh, us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give us all the tawfiq and the hidayat of appreciating our deen. These madaris, madaris, kila hai. It is a fortress. Hazrat Marana Abdul Majid, Daryabadi, used to go and sometimes he would, it happened that he would go out into uh, the jungles, the villages. And then he would even find there madrasas. And then immediately his first impression or he would express and he would remark this that madaris kila hai these are the fortresses of the deen 
and this is where people resort to this is where people come to and when they want when they in need uh, so that they can see to their masail so that they can see to their spiritual needs so they can see to the ahkam of the deen allahu akbar there is a waqia said an imam uh, fakhruddin razi rahimahullah ta'ala has written this waqia in tafsir e kabir of a wali of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is passing by a certain place and he understands and he's been made to see that there is azab of qabr that's being uh, given out to certain certain person in that particular grave nevertheless he continues he finishes his work he carries out his errands and he's now on the return on the way back and then he's made to understand that the adab of cover has it has come to a stop it's come to an end and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspires him and says that this person by whose graveside you passed and he was being punished fair enough yes he was being punished for his sins but in that time his son started reading was taught this first article in madrasa bismillahir rahmanir rahim in the name of allah who is most kind and most merciful allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that I find it against myself that the child, Masum child, is learning this and calling out in the name of Allah, the most kind and the most merciful. I find it against myself to punish the father of that very same child. So I stop the adab. Allahu Akbar. So these madaris, it is for that empowerment to the youth, empowerment to the ummah, to every person until the day of Qiyamah. Allah Ta'ala give me the tawfiq as well. So the asal is this, the deen. It is necessary, it is compulsory. Yes, and the dunya and circular etc. Yes, maybe we can say the most, there's some type of need for it. It is not necessary, there's some type of zarurat. So make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all these dini activities that we are carrying out, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts it. And Allah ta'ala lets it be, let it be such also that our children follow in this path. Our children also adopt this and choose this type of path of deen. Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jilani rahimahullah ta'ala used to say, Come, come, let us get together. And this wall... This wall that has become crooked, referring to the deen, referring to the deen. He's addressing the people and he's saying, come, let us all get together and make this wall straight. O moon, you also come. And O sun, you also come. You are also the makhluk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us all come together and make this wall that has become crooked due to our own doings, due to ourselves abandoning Quran, Hadith and the deen of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa It has become crooked. Let us all get together and make it straight and get to the same path. This path which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has showed us. You know, I go to UK to London and there also I see this it is so apparent it brings happiness and delight to me that students are studying they go to school etc but according to the amount of hours they spend in school that's the amount of hours that is dedicated for the Deen Allahu Akbar and what can I say these Gujarati people this is something with them that wherever they go they are concerned about the deen Allah Ta'ala bless us all with his muhabbat Allah Ta'ala give us true love for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and a true ta'aluk and relationship with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and true and sincere obedience for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the ummah is parishan Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala assist us all we understand what type of difficulty we are going through but remember well that without turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there would be no answer to this great predicament that we are in. We have to turn and resort to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, turn to Him, turn to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our lives. Jani, 
and mali allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our properties and our wealth ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم بحرمة سيد النبي الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل على